So my name is Stanislas. I'm a client solu solution developer at Odoo. So we're basically a um, customer project, a bit like you guys normally. <laughs> so I'll introduce the tool we've developed for, for those projects, so it's a rec uh, it which records automated integration tests through the UI. So why a custom tool to record integration tests? So first of all, I don't have to tell you guys that, but why testing your code? You want to avoid re regression with new development. That's obvious. And you, uh, but obviously, as, as I assume you have the same issue as we do, the schedule, the deadlines, make, make it such that you miss time to write your own test, your own unit test. You may mainly never have the time to do it. In our case, what we want to do is not make unit tests, but we want to make integrate integration tests. For uh, in terms of user stories, it's, they're more, more meaningful, and especially on projects that have uh, ongoing development that last one year, two year, with a regular uh, upgrade. Well, you want to avoid crashing the development you made six months ago by just doing a new development that you forgot changes stuff. Uh, here in this case, uh, what the tool I'm going to introduce, so well, the purpose is to uh, involve the end user to manage the business part of the of your code, uh, and you just handle the techie one for the test. Especially on big project, if you have multiple developer uh, de developing on a, on, a, on a specific app, usually the developer don't know the full scope of your project. So in this case, you want the project manager or the customer to be involved in that one and do the, this part. So what I'm going to introduce is yet another custom Odoo tool. So yes, we could have used Selenium or something else like that. Uh, we just didn't uh, because we wanted the purpose of our test were to uh, test the business no logic. And most of the business logic is on the server side and not on the on the front end, and we uh, want to avoid having our, all our tests having to be remade from scratch whenever the customer asks us to change the position of a button. Uh, and after that, all of our tools, uh, we, want, we want to be able, able to use our continuous integration tools, in our case, or Runbot or Odoo SH for uh, at least the development environment part. So, uh, it's just an audio module, so it's available in version from 10 to 13. Uh, and since it's uh, just an audio module, it's just you need to add your repository in your add-ons path when you're going to use it. So you can add it in your add-ons path on your custom uh, your uh, continuous integration environment here, run the runbot ODSH, or do, do it just locally. And you want to make sure you install the module. The module is called runbot testing recording because we used it on our runbot, so didn't change the name. So warning, small note: use it use use it only on a testing environment. This is not a tool made for to be in production. That's not the purpose. The purpose is to do it on demonstration data. And besides, in terms of performances, this could slow your, uh, your code. The purpose is to record, record tests. So obviously, we do stuff behind the, behind the back. Uh, it does not cover all the use cases. So basically, every use case that uses a controller, mainly, mainly on, the, on the website, is, uh, won't work. But all the, the uses, use cases that use RPC calls will, will be recorded. So how do you create the test? So our module basically adds stuff in the debug menu. And you just basically, as soon as you start a test, you can record your flow, create an expense, uh, confirm a lead, whatever, stuff like that. Go until uh, 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 go at a certain point in your flow. And you want, whenever you want to make a test, you want to flag it in the UI directly to say, OK, here I want to test that the expense is going to be a certain amount, that the state is going to be in a specific uh, state, etc. Uh, R2 automatically catches error and suggests to record them. So when you have 
something that uh, is prevented in, in, in the code, well, it raises an error. Here in our, in our case, it raises the error and says, OK, do you want to record it? So you create within your test, you're going to actually test that it should be, you should have an error there. So, so later on, if you, your code breaks it and makes it such that the error is not raised anymore, you would, you would be able to see it in your environment. <coughs> Since it's an Odoo module within your database, uh, within your testing database, all the tests is stored in the database. So basically, creates it writes Python code in text file, and you have the test file, the, the, the test code afterwards. So now we've recorded the flow. We want to create the test. So we go in our backend, and we we'll want to use the unit uh, the unit test framework of Odoo. So even though the framework is made to do unit tests, we use it as integration uh, to test. Uh, integration uh, aspect. So basically, I copy-paste the code from the, interfa the interface to, uh, uh, to my editor. And I have some stuff to, um, to change. So basically, we're going to create uh, a test. Uh, we're going to create uh, the same way we, we would use the, the unit test framework. Import common transaction case, have a method that starts with test something, and copy-paste all my code underneath. The module tries to create external ID dy dynamically. So when you create stuff, the references are created as well, because you want uh, your test to be independent of the da data. <coughs> so if the data that you tested something on was two, you don't want uh, two to be in your code, because if you have multiple tests that you add later on, depending on the order they would be run, you would have an issue. An issue. Since we cannot create external ID uh, like that automatically for everything, we basically try to uh, find the shortest path when you reference uh, your, your uh, records to something that was uh, used before. And it tries to do it um, automatically. It's not perfect, but it tries to. And of course, after that, a manual look at the code is, nece is necessary to just find uh, whatever has been missing. The code generated, uh, since it needs a manual pass, you've got some to-do to -do flags to check whatever is needed. In this code, we've recorded uh, something on account, account move. In this case, uh, the account move we, we used was generated automatically at some points. The ID is 10. We ha still have to check and find a way to uh, a path some way to reference it to make it to make sure that the tool can uh, it can do the test properly after a second run if the ID is not 10. And of course the to do well wherever we put the flag I need a test here test the amount or whatever well you get a to do flag saying do the test so basically you're going to write your assert something to check if the test is right. After, after that I've got my, my test. Everything is recorded. I want to I want to test that my test actually works. When it's going to be in our continuous integration tool. So in this case, we run test automatically. Uh, we make sure that our test works, doesn't break anything. Well, well not that it breaks everything because the test doesn't break stuff. But you want to make sure the test is green. And then as soon as it's green, you integrate it. In this case, since it's a test, you don't really need to have a complex uh, uh, complex back and forth with, with your project manager or something like that. You just integrate it directly, and it will be run in your continuous development with, the, with your customer. So small demonstration. So here, I have a database. Uh, on which I install my module. The module is going to add stuff in the uh, debug mode. In this case, I'm going to start a test. OK, I say here, nice test. You need to, rec it requires have to have a module to apply the tests on, more for external IDs. Here is my test. And I start recording st uh, some things, some flows. In this case, I'm going to do something simple, create quotation for any uh, specific customer. Up. 
save, I confirm, and say, okay, there is no deliver to this product. This product cannot be uh, invoiced if there is no delivery. So I create an invoice. I want to create the regular invoice. And you see, oh, there is an error. Basically, the code raised an error saying, okay, user error. Uh, something must be invoiceable. Okay, I want to re record this error. Okay, I'm gonna, to keep it in the test, I'm going to edit, put something to deli being delivered, save, create invoice. Then I'm on the invoice, I can post it, whatever. Let's say I'm at the, invo at the invoice state, I want to flag something, so I want to check be made. I've, be, I've posted the entry, so now the invoice uh, I created, so the account move of ID here in this case is the ID 10 that was created. Uh, total will be 840 and the state is uh, posted, something like this. Save my test. I finished recording my tests. You can do multiple more uh, flags here and there. Here's simple flow. I stop my, my tests. And uh, now I go in the technical set settings where the module added, uh, the menu was added. So here in the run bot tests in our database structure. And you see there is a record create nice test, and you've seen code. I can see that I create data, and we can check our to-dos. Okay, here, for example, the account move didn't, uh, didn't work, to, it didn't find the path with, uh, with the, my previous record, and on the account move, I see the method called action post, and here, my test, I need to do a test something. Uh, here saying testing the, the amount. Maybe check the number of lines and stuff like that. So some conclusions. So in this case this tool is used to create unit tests to, uh, server side but that are actual actual integration tests. Uh, with this kind of tool, you can involve your uh, your customer, the end user, and uh, to give you an example uh, in terms of timing, you can write a thousand line of code in just a few hours, integrate it, done. Well, actually, I didn't write the thousand line of code. Someone registered on the UI and sent me the code, and I did it, and I just checked throughout the, the system. It basically allows you to involve your end user in your test pr uh, testing process. So you want to involve your customer and your project manager uh, in that way because usually they're pushing you with the deadlines to put more features, stuff like that. But you also want to get rid of the na nasty, oh, just after a j nasty <coughs> mail or phone call just after the, you, you, put an, uh, you put an upgrade on. Okay, by the way, you just broke something. Well, you should have told me earlier before uh, if you had tested everything. Now we can test everything. So it ensures robustness for continuous development, so, and as well for migration of custom code. Obviously, uh, if you do custom code, you want from one migration to another, you want to, the business flow to be the same. So either you re-record the business flow the same way you did with adding the same test, or you migrate the, the, the code, uh, the test as well. And that's it. <laughs> Any question? Yes? First of all, this is the best thing that I've seen through the whole conference, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't know how it's written, so we don't say that. <laughs> the question is the following. So, we already have tools which more or less does the same thing. Yeah. So, why would you choose this or that or each other? So, what's the difference? Between something like Selenium? No, uh, like all the tools, so you can just record, write up um, JavaScript steps to yep. navigate to the UI. That's exactly what I want to avoid because I want to test the uh, 
the business code. Usually, it's not the case all, all the time, usually the whole everything in the business code is done in the back end. So I want to do uh, just back end tests. Uh, and here it's for just perf uh, personal preferences to do to do uh, the unit test framework to use the unit test framework as it is because it's wor it works pretty nicely and the only test you can do uh, through the UI is using tours which just test that you can click st uh, at some point or that you can do a process but it doesn't check the value of, uh, of, of, of some specific uh, records in this case I can say test whatever value test the number of lines whatever something like that so it's much uh, much more robust and besides I wanted to do it just for the sake of it <laughs> good thing you did <laughs> yes in the tree yes it's uh, on github on uh, which versions of all so I did it in 10 first time. It's been migrated to 13. I'm not, I'm not saying it's bug free, but it works. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you.